Hello and welcome to Drunk Movie Reviews. <laughs> Hello and welcome to B Movie Mania. I'm Mike Hayes. I'm Paul Brooks. <coughs> I'm Paul Brooks. What, Mike? What? Why? Why are you? Why are you wearing these sunglasses? Paul, I'm wearing these glasses because. I'm feeling real cool about these movies tonight. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ah. Intro. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Alright. Mike, today is our special Dollar Tree episode of B Movie Mania. Dollar Tree is a store. You've probably been been in it at some point. One time I went in Dollar Tree and I found I found some movies <laughs> that just that just blew my mind. Tonight we're going to review two of my extensive collection of Dollar Tree movies. The first film that we'll be reviewing is one of my favorite films in the universe. Mm -hmm. It's called the land of college profits. Where's the DVD? This movie, I feel like, I'm not joking when I say this, I feel like at some point in this review I should cry. Mm -hmm. Because that's how much I love this movie. This movie right here I'm, I'm going to try to cry. <laughs> Pretend that I'm crying okay. about it. We'll fix it in post. Put the gl glycerin mm -hmm. in my eyes right here. Yeah. That's how much I love this movie. Plot. The plot of this film is... <laughs> I bought this at Dollar Tree. <laughs> yeah. For a dollar. The plot of the film is thick with mythos and yeah. backstory. Yeah. yeah <laughs> the filmmakers buddy. just presume the audience knows. And there's no possible way they could. Well, right. There's a ton of exposition at the beginning of the film. Mm hmm. Rye and I attended Robinson College. It was a small community college at the center of the town of Pharisee. It was a positive place, and I guess in the end we hoped some of that would rub off onto us, but it never did. They want to bring you into this, this world of college prophecy. Mm hmm And it's, they succeed. You're enveloped. No, You're there's, in. There may be a lot of what just happened and why is that happening. But you, within the world they've created, you get it. Yeah. You're saying, Tommy, Rye, Third Reich Joe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Third Reich Joe's. Bells. Uh, Jonah. Jonah. Sunshine, oh, Sunshine Sal. Sunshine Sal. So many college prophets. There's a lot of college prophets. It's like the Mortal Kombat of, mov of and movies. Not the Mortal Kombat movie or Mortal Kombat Annihilation. No. This is the true Mortal Kombat of movies. Yeah. <laughs> God, this movie. It's like the first time you fall in love, mm -hmm. you're, you're just like, I didn't know it could be like this. I didn't know that it was, that I would stumble upon something that would change my life so much and give me a hard on at the same time. These times were our salad days. Me and Rye were as happy as a, a dolphin eating a hot dog. This was obviously a the creation of a writer 
director, editor, sound engineer, music composer, ev everything. This guy did everything. What's his name? Thomas, Thomas Edward, Edward Seymour. Seymour. Yes. He, he stars in it. He plays the, the char uh, character of Tommy. And he didn't direct it. You didn't direct it? Jeez. Take uh, a look. I'm well. It's if I believe you. He didn't. He probably had someone else. That's smart, really. I mean, he's doing everything else. Oh wait, executive producer also is Bruce Seymour, by the way. Directed by the oh, it's directed by the Hale Manor Collective. They all directed it. It's it's like the Animal Collective. I went into Dollar Tree, I saw this movie, I bought this movie, mm -hmm. and then I bought all the other ones. I, I watched it, mm -hmm. and then I went back to Dollar Tree and cleared them out. Sure. Of all the movies <laughs> that they had. I'm not joking. I know, I've seen the stack of movies right. you have. I have a lot of Dollar Tree movies. This movie is not available in Dollar Tree anymore. It's on Amazon though, right? Maybe. I bet it is. The point that I'm trying to make is, if you feel compelled to watch this movie, come over. Just come here. This comes off. No, Paul, stop. It no. does, it's, but it yeah, does. No, it yeah, comes but... off. It comes off. Come over and watch this if you want to, because... Uh, like, film... Film 101. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> All right, fine. Here's what we're doing now, Paul. All right, what are we doing? Segment time! Let's do it. What do you got for me tonight? Here's what I got for you. A little thing we like to call Hollywood or Hollywooden. One of my favorites. Paul, would Hollywood remake this movie or would Hollywood not remake this movie? Mike, easiest question you've ever asked me in the history of time. Mm-hmm. Hollywood would so remake this movie, it's not even funny. This film is so ripe for remake that I kind of feel like if I just put this in someone's hands in Hollywood and say, bro, gold mine, it's only a matter of time. So you think they would see the value that they could do to remake it into a big production movie? Money. Money dollars. Paul, when you're editing this, put dollar signs on the screen because Land of College Profits, money in the bank. Well, you know what, Paul? I'd say Holly wouldn't remake this movie. You, you're... Do not say that just to contradict me. I'm not. I have a point behind it. You've got to be joking. Here's the thing. I think that this movie, this Land of College Prophets, is too filled with mythos and story. It was understandable why Rye couldn't beat Jones. Townsmen believed he was engineered by the Nazis before the Second World War, and that he's a hundred years old. I think Hollywood remaking a movie would not follow it. They wouldn't get, they exactly. wouldn't They wouldn't go through and, and do it justice. I don't think they'd even give it the time of day. I think they wouldn't recognize that all these characters could be fleshed out even more and made into a fantastic package. I think Hollywood would overlook that and not remake it. Listen, here's the deal. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Hollywood would, would, would not do this film justice, mm -hmm. but they would try. I don't think they would. They would try and they would fail. It would not be as good as the original. But they would be like, we got to remake this. This movie's nuts. I almost cursed. You almost did. I held back. But Paul, let's... It's crazy. Let's, can, let's, let's just agree to disagree. That's fine. Because this leads me into... America. This leads me into segment number two. Let's do this thing. It's called Director's Cut. What is director? Explain what Director's Cut is. I'm going to tell you a movie director, and you're going to tell me how they would have made this movie. 
You are so good at these segments. This is all him coming up with this stuff. Hit me with your best shot. Well, what if the director of The Land of College Profits was Mr. Quentin Tarantino? Same movie. Same movie? Mike, I'm here to tell you. Same movie. So many Pulp Fiction-esque moments in this film, okay? The beginning of the film is yeah. also the end of the film, mm -hmm. or at least towards the end of the film. Sure. In the middle of the forest, mid-breath, mid-stride, my heart will stop and so shall I. Maybe for the best. I don't believe my heart ever worked right in the first place. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to stick with then. Right. Mike Hayes. Mm-hmm. Director's cut. What do you got? Fella by the name of Round. Or, <laughs> fella by the name of Ron Howard. If Ron Howard. You made, familiar with him? I've seen a couple of his movies. Okay. If Ron Howard made this film. Yeah. I think it would be. It would look better. Well, this Cinem was shot. Yeah, no, it was shot on a, a, a Rice Krispies box. <laughs> um, Four, three. Yeah. Like 2000. When was this made? 2005? Five. Five. Gotta be 2004, 2005. Sounds right. Because straight up 4 3 SD, like, mm -hmm. home movie, JVC, like, let's hit up Best Buy and get the best SD camera we can find. Mm hmm. Not good. No couple years it's garbage but Gar this is gonna look like garbage probably now yeah. our show oh yeah <laughs> uh but no i think it would look it would look better more polished yes. but i think it would be the same movie <laughs> i think the, the script would say the same i think he would tell the story this is this is so interesting Qu i said you said quentin tarantino for me mm-hmm I said same movie. Mm -hmm. You said Ron Howard, or I said Ron. Whatever. I my mine is Ron same Howard. Same movie. Same movie. Guess what? This movie can't be. It's like the Bible. It's it cannot. It is the truth. This film is unchangeable. Mm -hmm. it, there 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 is something about this film that is just pure truth. Big bird. Yeah. What else can you say about it, really? Then the, this is just pure, pure filmmaking right here. Paul, you know what you can say about it? What? Whatever your rating is. Oh my gods! You know I'm tempted. You know I'm I, tempted to go mm, two fulls. Yeah, I know. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go. Five fingers mm -hmm. and one hand mm -hmm. and a fist. Oh, that's, that's because a, mm, college mm -hmm. prop. There's so many fight scenes in this, you know, and just mm -hmm. this just feels good. Talking's for the civil. Let's act like primates. Please stop. Stay out of the spells. You feel you feel that? I it feels real good. Okay. Feels good. What do you, what about you? I'm gonna give it Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. An inquisitive finger. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> One inquisitive finger. Are you sure about no, that? No. I'm gonna give no, it That's okay. If that's your instinct, go with it. <laughs> go with it. No, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a hand and five fingers, uh, like you started with. Yeah. And then throw in the inquisitive yeah, finger. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about yeah. right there. So, mm. incredible film. Remember what I said to you tonight before we started this? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> I said you can wake me up at 4:15 in the morning mm -hmm. and just put and just 
in the darkness put this in front of my face and I will leap out of bed. Mm -hmm. I will leap out of bed for the L O C P. Fantastic. The land of college profits. Once again, the town was safe, and we could tell the story of how her tragedy refueled our humanity, how the sky is yellow, and how God speaks to every man in the land of the college prophets. In drunk movie reviews, you would th throw this. I would not throw it, though. It's going down the pants. Good well, night. <laughs> no, it's no. not a good night. <laughs> Let's throw it. Speaking of things in people's pants. Speaking of prophecy, we're going to take it to our man in the streets, Tim. And he's going to tell us what's up with this movie, what people are saying about this movie in my crotch on the street. Tim, what's up? <laughs> hey, guys. I'm out here in front of the dollar store and, uh, you know... You wouldn't believe it, but nobody's seen this one. So, I, I got nothing for you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. I swear. I think that's the most big, <laughs> the best thought you're gonna have in this next 20 minutes. <laughs> Dollar, Dollar Tree movies mm -hmm. are just the best. By the best, you mean the the worst? The most pure. Do you think Dollar Tree movies are super pure? Like a diamond? Yeah. Like a yeah. crystal clear diamond. I'm so glad you said that because I, I, uh, there's nothing I can think of that would say it better than that. Yeah? <laughs> You think I'm joking, but no, I'm not. I know you're honest. I know. listen, Paul. If there's one thing I know about you, it's that you're honest. Right. And, thank you. And you know what's an honest representation of what someone wanted to have as a film? Our next movie. A little something called salvation. Paul. Can you describe for our audience what Salvation is about? It's about a lady in medieval times who comes back. To life as a ghost. To protect a young girl who is now 30. from a biker gang. A car was left in a field. Stayed there for 15 years, it stayed there. See, nothing, except my father's briefcase. Now she's here to save the day. So fancy. Paul. Yeah. May I give my impression of this movie? Do it. Hi. Yeah. I'm a Knights Templar. <laughs> you might not know because I'm wearing leather and like sunglasses, but look my eyes. Aren't they scary? She's cool as hell. The girl you're referring to, cool as hell. She's the worst. Uh, she, there's one worse actor in this film than her. What you talking about? I'm talking oh, about yeah, yeah. Uh, her opponent. The Templar. The, the, the guy who's dressed as a Templar the whole time. He's mine. There's nothing you could do about it. You knew you couldn't save them both. It's mind-boggling, this movie. The fact... I can get rid of these. Uh, the fact that it takes place... Okay, so it's supposedly like these two souls during, like, 
the Crusades, I guess? And it's these two souls that are fighting over the the souls of new new deads, new dead people. No, no, no. I'm to have two souls today. I won't allow it. He doesn't care what you won't allow. There are rules. They will both burn. And it doesn't make any sense at any point in the movie. And it's it's there's I, I I'm just mind boggled about how to even describe this to anybody. I understand your frustration. I sympathize. But what you have to understand is that sometimes genius filmmakers cannot be understood by simple minds such as you and I. Okay? Look at David Lynch. Uh -huh. Have you seen Mulholland Drive? Yeah. No one knows what that movie's about. Well, it's a dream state, and then so a, a woman is in a car crash and sees it in a dream, same and thing. then like there's a whole like salvation, same thing. David Lynch loves dream sequences and all that kind of stuff, so it's all very like ah uh, and texture and stuff. So that like it makes sense because it's not supposed to make sense. Same thing. But I no, I'm pretty sure that salvation is supposed to make sense. It was produced by God, by the way. Let's cut to that. It was produced by God. Which should tell you something. That it's the perfect movie. The story is... Un un ununderstandable. <laughs> Absolute gibberish. Let's see, if, let's see if the back helps us. Alright, read the back. I'm going to take a drink. The centuries-old battle between the powers of heaven and the forces of hell have collided in a final modern-day showdown. The determining factor may lie in the, hearts, in, in the heart of a little girl. Murder today, mm -hmm. she has arisen to avenge those that have wronged her. But she will find that the, that the truth is not always as it seems. Mm -hmm. Will she risk damning her own soul to purgatory forever to do what's right? At no point was that condition no. made at... <laughs> no. It's amazing. No. This movie is amazing. It's amazing that it was made. It's amazing that someone amazing. thought that they could do it. What's your problem? Salva salvation. Here's a movie that was... What? What was this movie? I thought... It was, I thought I saw, you would assume that it starred and directed by the same girl. It seemed to be that way. But Starred Heather Sorokin. Sure. Uh, directed by J.A. Steele. I think it's the same girl. Could be. Could be. A pseudonym? Yeah. The right word? A, a nom de plume. Pseudonym works, the, right? You know what? No, synonym. Wait. No, pseudonym, yeah. It doesn't matter. This movie's amazing. No. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing in a way. It's in no way good. It's a feat of just insanity. And not in a good way. Not in a David Lynch kind of way. You want me to explain? Uh, I want you to cut to that bit. Okay. Paul? <laughs> yes. My Here's a question for you. Hit me hard. Hollywood? So hard. Or Hollywood? Hollywood. Why is that? Hollywood loves God. Passion of the Christ. Left behind. 
Jesus is for real. Was that the name of it? Jesus is surreal. Jesus is surreal. No, I mean maybe. But Hollywood I... loves God. Nope, I don't agree with that at all. God is at the center of this film. Yeah. This movie was produced by God. Mm -hmm. Hollywood, call me, because I have her contact info. Yeah, I looked it up. You didn't. You just went to her website? Yeah. All right. On Facebook. Shh. <laughs> if you want to make, if you want to remake this movie, Salvation, you can call it something, something that fits, you, works better for you, like. Jesus, Jesus heals, Jesus is, Jesus salvation, that's, that's all you got to do really, call me and I'll put you in contact with J.A. Seal, and you're good to go. Paul, <laughs> I have a very firm Hollywoodent. Big surprise. Yeah, you know why? Because the movie makes no sense at any point in it. What happened to me? Is this hell? Is this purgatory? Why won't you tell me? Where am I? When am I? Does it matter? It is uninteresting throughout the entire thing. Why would anyone try to do this? It's a movie about a ghost who isn't even a ghost. They keep interacting with things that are things, but then they can't interact with things. He can't see me. He can't hear me either. Nobody can see us or hear us. You can see me? But of course. How is this possible? All things are possible. None of it makes sense. There's no logic involved with it ever. And at some point, during the whole f***ing... And at some point whatsoever, during the whole finale of the film, when, when the girl is killing the biker gang, they keep coming through a bar's men's room door. They go to the men's room, they pee, and then when they come back out of it, they're in a playground. Thank you. Where she murders them. And that sounds interesting. That sounds interesting. But I relax. guarantee, I promise you, I promise you so much, it is not interesting. It's really boring. It is. Ugh. Don't kill me. You're already dead. <laughs> Just relax. I can't. This movie was terrible. I hated it. That's us. Bye. Bye. So, that guacamole. That was like four or five days ago. Wasn't I, it was like six. Did you finish it? No, it's Did still you there. Eat? You want some?